We begin here in the Victorian Central Highlands, Andrew, standing next to a 75-year-old mountain ash. She's magnificent, Nick, and this is the story of native forestry, but it's more than that. It's the story of this one tree. In Victoria, just about all the ash harvesting takes place in what's known as 39 regrowth, trees that sprouted in the wake of a massive wildfire in 1939. For our tree, though, the end doesn't come by way of fire, but mechanical harvester, and it's quite something to see. After felling, the tree is picked up by the skidder and taken to the landing for the first stage of processing. One of the benefits of harvesting these relatively young trees is the fact they're fairly rot-free, giving a potentially higher yield of saw logs. So, Jared, now that our mountain ash is at the landing, the processing begins, the decision-making. Bits of this log are going to go their separate ways, aren't they? That's correct, Andrew. Uh, the end of the log here, this is yep. the, the high-end saw log. You can see it's nice and clean. This is going to go into saw log products such as flooring and furniture. OK. As we move further down? As we move further down, we get into a lower end saw log product. This is going to go into structural timbers. OK, yep. And then the, the very tip? The very tip, it's got the most defect in it. We can't take saw log out of it, so it goes into pulpwood. This is a product that normally it'd be left on the forest floor. It's a byproduct from taking high end saw log. Each log is graded based on its characteristics. This determines which customer gets which part of the tree and ensures that the whole tree is used. The butt of it's clean, so, and it's nice and straight. There's not so many limbs, so it looks like we'll get an 11 metre length out of it. So I run the tape out, down to 11. Make sure there's no limbs where we're cutting. And we'll cut it off. Once it's graded, the two sections of saw log from our tree get loaded on a truck heading for the mill in Hayfield, 50 kilometres from the harvest site. At every stage of the process, more and more effort is being applied to getting maximum value from our tree. The clean, clear cuts of timber take care of themselves, but ingenuity is required to up the value of the offcuts. Even with the low value timber, we'll endeavour to maximise that through further processing. An example of that is the shed we're in at the moment, the finger joining laminating line. We'll take small, short, narrow pieces of low grade timber, we'll finger joint them, and then we'll laminate them together and we'll create long, wide pieces of timber that compete with imported products. In this mill, even the sawdust doesn't go to waste. It's used to fire boilers, which in turn generate the electricity to power the mill. For the sawn timber, the journey has just begun. The lower quality merchant grade for timber framing or structural use, the top notch appearance grade product for flooring or something even more special. And so the absolute best of the yes. best comes to a place like this, which is Beautiful. a furniture factory to be manufactured, Andrew, into lovely pieces of solid timber furniture. That's right, Nick. The furniture industry around Australia employs tens of thousands of people, and a lot of it is due to mountain ash. Christian Cole of Christian Cole Furniture is one of those people. His workshop in Outer Melbourne specialises in handmade solid timber furniture. Mountain Ash is a perennial favourite among customers looking for that iconic Australian piece. They love the timber because it's very clean timber and it's got very good staining properties. So it takes stain well as well and um, it lifts the grain as well when you stain it up. So. Yeah, a lot of the clients want, they don't like a lot of features in their timber, they like it quite clean. And it is one of those timbers that comes up very clean. And also we can give a better warranty with Mountain Ash also because of the, um, the durability of it and the gluing properties of it and it's very stable in the house too. It's that stability, durability and accessibility that has helped Vic Ash become the cornerstone of the Victorian furniture industry. 
Mountain ash, it's one of the mainstay staple timbers that's used in the industry, particularly in the volume end of the market, and without a timber that has the combination of the properties and the, the, the scale of it, a lot of the mainstream manufacturers just wouldn't exist. It's one of those key timbers in the market for us. And the continuing prosperity of the Victorian furniture sector is closely linked to a continuing supply of this premium native grown resource. For us, the native forestry, it is the key and bedrock of the industry and it's one of the things that makes our furniture unique and beautiful and without that there wouldn't be a solid timber industry. But not all of the trees suitable for saw log for the small diameter spindly top section. It's a different but no less important journey. Not all the timber that comes out of that tree, Nick, is your glamour timber. Not every stick, Andrew, can be a Stradivarius. No. That uh, load going on there is headed for the mill, which will turn into a product that everybody uses. It's loaded on the truck for the short trip down the road to one of Australia's biggest paper-making facilities, Australian Paper at Maryvale. All right, so from the bush, Nick, our log, the top section of which yep. ends up here with a whole heap of other mountain ash. At Australian Paper, Andrew, yes. Maryvale, and it is about to embark on an extraordinary journey in yes, 300 it metres. It will go from being a log, yes. come out the other end as uh, fine white copy paper. Although almost two-thirds of the wood processed here is plantation grown, Australian paper also processes low-grade material from managed state forests through chip mill, pulp mill, and finally paper machine. The top section of our tree, which has unique characteristics important for making office paper, will pass to become Australian-made, sustainably certified, high-quality paper. From the, uh, the tree that you would have seen harvested, it's uh, anything that could make a saw log would have been made a saw log and it's normally the top end that the smaller where there's lots of branches and lots of potential defect for saw log we can take in we can make good use of that so from that it'll come through the wade ridge behind us here through to our site here and really within seven days it could be from a tree to photocopy paper and the value adding goes further. Sawdusts and pulp residues are used to fire boilers to create electricity. Australian paper is in fact Victoria's largest industrial generator of electricity. It's the story of modern forestry where nothing goes to waste. So while there's plenty of scope for growth on the demand side of things, the fact that Vic Ash is a native grown species from tightly managed state forests means that supply isn't likely to increase and that in turn will drive further value adding. I think that's being forced on, on the industry somewhat by the resource situation. Uh, but look, the, the sawmillers and the producers and manufacturers are very proactive and they're looking at, at ways of converting uh, probably a lower grade log that might have gone into framing previously into a value added product down the track. So in the past, about a third of our timber went into fairly low value application. And this is generally around the quality of the resource, things like palings and pallets. Um, about a third of it went into structural timber, fairly easy to, to produce. Simply dry the timber, cut it into the sections you need, has good strength. And about a third of the timber into appearance grade products, so flooring and furniture. But I definitely think over the next sort of 12 months, 18 months, we're going to see a big shift of that structural hardwood timber into those higher value appearance products. The other point that needs to be remembered is that after harvest, forests are naturally regenerated, flourishing in the landscape and providing biodiversity for the next generation. The regeneration story is really replacing the forests that we've harvested. So what we want to do is hand back those forests for future generations to make decisions about. So we're able to reap the benefits of natural timber products coming off our coop, but we need to do the right thing by replenishing those areas that have been harvested. So increasingly every part of our one tree from Victoria's ash forests is a valued commodity. The best of the best is sawn to become furniture and floors. Next best becomes structural and framing timber with the remainder destined for the photocopy machine as Australian made fine white copy paper. Even the sawdust is used to fire boilers and generate electricity. It's the story of modern forestry where nothing goes to waste.